is a, another example. And here we have a steady state two unit process is shown. And then we have A and B, components A and B are in different proportions. And they want the flow rates and compositions of stream one, stream two, and stream three. So we can actually do balances. So we have the ability to, there's, there's four different balances that we can do. And I'm just going to, I'm going to box out the balances. So we can do a ba balance around each of the unit ops. We can do a balance around the mix. And then the other balance we can do, turn that too high. Is the other balance we can do is an overall system balance. So we have four potential places to do balances on. And so the way you look at the balances that we have, so there's no reactions in here, so we simply have mass balances that we can do. So your mass balances you can do is you can do in a two component system, the most mass balances you can do are two, one for each component or an overall balance and one for a single component. And the reason you can't do three is because the sum of your two individual component balances is your total balance. So that means that they're not complete, they're not independent. So if we look at that, and let's say we look at this overall balance, what we don't know, let's see, coming into the overall balance, we have this stream, we have this stream coming out, this one going in the stream coming out and so we don't know stream 3 so we don't know stream 3 so there's two unknowns in stream 3 the flow rate of A the flow rate of B and we have two mass balances so we could technically start by solving for stream 3 using an overall balance that is, that's a valid balance to use because we have two equations two unknowns um, if we look instead at say so I'm just I'm going to take that balance out because it's a valid one. Now if we look here at unit op 2, what do we have? We have two unknowns in stream 2, two unknowns in stream 3 for a total of four unknowns, and we still only have two equations. So in this case we have two unknowns more than we have equations. So that's that's uh, an underspecified case so we're not actually going to be able to do that mass balance right away similarly around the mix point we have four unknowns and two equations so we also can't do a balance around there to start with so that leaves us with a balance around the first unit which has two unknowns in stream one and our two two equations or the balance around the entire system So, does everyone catch how I quickly looked at that balance to see where to start? Because that, that's, that's what's known as a degree of freedom analysis. It's not really covered in the NCES handbook, but it's a quick check to see where to start. If there was a reaction or some sort of physical relationship given for any of these unit ops, that would increase the number of equations available. So on this one, I would take the straightforward and just march straight through stream one, stream two, and through stream three solution because stream one, you can do the balance on that quickly. Once you have stream one, you can do a balance on the mix point to get stream two. And then once you have stream two, you can do a balance on the second unit op to get stream three. So if we do that stream one, the total flow of stream one, is going to be your 100 kilograms an hour coming in minus your 40 kilograms an hour coming out which is 60 and then you do a component balance for a and b take their mass fractions times the flow rate and you'll have 14 kilograms an hour of a in stream one 
46 kilograms an hour of B, or 23.3% A and 76.7% B. Then if you look around the mix point, so here now I've, I've added that information to the diagram. I go around the mix point, and now I can do the same thing around the mix point. In this case, I'm going to add the two streams together, so we have 90 kilograms an hour, 23 kilograms an hour of A, 67 kilograms an hour of B, or 25.6% A and 74.4% B. And then around, again, around point, the third unit op, in this case, we get a total of 60 kilograms, 5 of A, 55 of B, so we're 8.3% A, 91.7% B. So this, this example is a little bit easier than what you would get on the exam, but the idea is if you have, to, if you have your choice here was just to show if you have your choice of how to solve, you have to look and see where to start because some starting at the wrong point, like if you had started at the mix point, you would you would not have been able to solve. If you started unit op two or the mix point, you would not have been able to solve the problem. So degree of freedom analysis isn't always necessary. But it sometimes makes it easier to figure out where the best part to place to start is. Hmm. All right, so here, this is going to be a little bit more of an in depth question.